Okay, so this is just a quick test of how I was able to get sort of a time-lapse look of an object um, animating here. So let's go to the timeline and I'm going to press play. Right, and so um, just to show kind of what's happening, it's just a growing curve um, and then a couple objects um, scaling. Right, and you'll notice that there's some flickering and so that flickering is one of the things that you might notice from a time-lapse video is that the light is different whenever a photograph is taken and that slight light variation is one of the things that's going to make a convincing time-lapse so let me just show you how I did that so I have a Sun and I've animated the Sun kind of rotating over time here and I've also animated the color going from white or blue to yellow and that just suggests the passing of time as the sun changes angle in the sky you can see the shadows also moving around um, and I kept the rotation constrained to how the sun might go past the earth or something like that in one particular direction uh, so I don't know if that's super accurate but um, it's just to help reinforce the passing of time and uh, so I've got that kind of color keyframe here you can click on the keyframe icon and it will if you unfold these here in the timeline it will show you those attributes um, so I only have a few keyframes for that um, the really tricky stuff though is getting the slight variation in movement each frame because whenever that photograph is taken either an hour a minute a day later um, there's gonna be slight movement um, the stem, I, did, I wasn't really able to figure out how to do that in the stem without um, maybe having to spend much more time on this. Um, but what, what I want to show is uh, the rotation um, that I was able to put on this object. So you'll notice that um, it starts rotating. Let me move this over. So I've got some rotation keyframes. It's just rotating from here to here. It's just rotating down slightly um, over these keyframes. But if you notice, it's actually wiggling as it goes. And that's just sort of suggests that, you know, that day or the hour that the photograph was taken, something changed. So it's slightly different. Uh, it's to sell this idea that there's photographs compiled together over time to create this time lapse. Um, to do that, after you have your keyframes uh, created here, you want to go to your graph editor. And uh, we're going to add a modifier called noise. So I'm going to disable this just to show you what this looks like in your graph editor. So if, if we actually hide everything except for Y rotation here, you can see here's our Y curve. And you know, you can modify this curve as you might when you're trying to change the animation easing. Um, but one of the things uh, Blender is able to do is actually add a modifier to create variation of different types. So well, I'm just going to delete this and then we're going to add a new one. So if I press the N key here, there's actually a, a panel that can pop out from the right. If you press N, uh, similar to how the panel works up here. And so we have modifiers. Um, if you're not seeing this, um, what you may have to do is select these, go to key, and then um, add an F curve modifier. And then I'm using noise. And all of that does is it adds this noise modifier here, and it just adds um, variation in our curve. So this is our original curve here and it's too kind of crazy. So if I was to play this back, it's maybe uh, too you know, off the wall. So um, we can take that scale, maybe increase the scale and then maybe decrease the strength. Okay. And then it's adding this curve variation for us. And you know, that kind of looks more time lapsy if that's the word I'm allowed to make up. Um, and so I've also done that to this, maybe to a, a lesser extent here. Um, and you can you can do it to, you don't want to do it to um, Z necessarily, but <clears throat> um, maybe, you know, because it, it just depends on the um, rotation. Um, I do have the origin point set here though. If we go to options, origins, you can see my origin is right here. 
that's so whenever this scales, it scales from this point out, and then whenever it rotates, it rotates from that point, so that the object itself isn't rotating separately in space and detaching um, from this point here. So, you know, of course, to, to move this origin point, you go into options origins and with that checkbox, um, you know, you can use the <clears throat> move tool here. I'm just gonna press G and then you can move that anywhere. If you wanna snap that, you would go up to snapping and then down to vertex and then closest I think should work, but I can actually snap this at different points, um, different vertices. So I'm gonna leave that where it was, turn this off. Um, and that, that, so I think in combination of the color changing of the light over time, the shadow moving, um, this variation in rotation that I made with the noise modifier, now it's starting to feel more like a time lapse. Um, you know, maybe on one frame there's a bug on it. Um, so we could go to uh, our timeline and I don't know, frame 135, some random frame. I'm just gonna add a sphere. This will be our bug. Just, uh... <clears throat> Maybe I'll, I'll turn um, face on here and then I could just easily snap that. I don't know, to the face. Uh, and then if we can make it black, uh, let's just go pure black and set the principle that I can just do a diffuse and make it rough. It's just a, you know, maybe, um, maybe I want to change the scale. Scale that this direction. And so we're going to keyframe. There's different ways I can have this uh, visible. One of the ways is just to keyframe its visibility here. So I'm going to turn on these restriction toggles for viewport and render. And um, I'm going to keyframe this on by pressing I over these two objects and then move one frame. Um, actually, I'm going gonna, gonna to keyframe the location and rotation, and then it's going to be keyframed to be visible. And I think I'm going to rotate this and move it up here. I'm going to keyframe these so it sort of does that. And then I'm going to make it invisible by turning these two off <clears throat> and pressing I. And um, actually, let me um, let me turn these on. Press I. Let's grab that object. So we actually need um, <clears throat> the visibility to be on hold here. So it's got to be visible, visible, and then we're going to go to this keyframe. <clears throat> turn them off, do invisible, invisible, and uh, select the object here, go to this keyframe, and then we're gonna turn these off. This is just to hide it before this, this uh, point in time. Okay, so now when we come back here, the camera view doesn't let us see the bug very well. Okay, so it just kind of flashes a bug. And I think there's too many frames. Okay, so we're gonna, oops. Let's move this one to here. Move these to here. Timeline to here, choose the sphere. It keeps disappearing, which is kind of annoying. There we go. And then I could come back later or be down here. Um, 
this. Let me just play this back. There we go. And so those little details help reinforce the idea of this time lapse. And you know, that's basically it. It's it's about trying to look at time lapse footage and pull out those attributes that make it look the way that it does. <clears throat> and just to show you what I've done with the light, because I did mention that before, how I animate the color changing, I also added added a keyframe to strength here. So I went to frame one. Sorry, I started on frame 85. Obviously, frame one is probably where you'll be starting. Um, and I added a keyframe. And then I went into the graph editor. And because I have this strength keyframe, now I can add a noise modifier. So I went up to key and I did add F curve modifier noise. And then I, um, you know, I can configure this noise to be more or less intense. And you feel I'll change the scale. So and that changes it left to right. Um, actually, I think that scale is fine, but I can make the, the strength a lot more intense. And maybe actually that might be working better for us. It's almost like clouds are passing and blocking the light. Okay, so between, oops, uh, just tried to hit save there. Uh, between the variation here of noise in the light intensity and the strength here of the sun, which I had set to one and then I, I, I modified it from there. You can set it higher and then add this, um, whatever you need to do. Um, you can change that after the fact with the keyframe. Um, and then I added noise um, to that to, to create that variation every single frame. And then I you know added that variation to the rotation here of this object. So uh, all these things combine to create the effect. And then uh, the last thing I wanna show is something I've added at the end which is just a shape key for the flower to open. So this is really easy to do, essentially in object mode. You go to the um, object data properties here, and so that's where the vertex groups and shape keys are. You can just um, uh, essentially create um, a sh uh, two different shape keys here, and then you can uh, change uh, the uh, value of the influence from one uh, basically um, change the shape between the basis and the key that you've created here um, the way that you do that is that you um, just add a basis so I can remove these here that's the basis so there's a no shape key select it add a shape key add a second key and then we can go in and then we can press s I can make a change and then come back out and then that's actually saved in the key but you won't see it until you increase the value right and now it's uh, you can actually animate that process so I'm going to undo that there we go and so now when we play this back I'm just going to enlarge the window and we'll turn these off <clears throat> 